The Bookshop Dog by Cynthia Ryland Read by Mr. Kilby The Bookshop Dog Once there was a woman who loved her dog so much that she could hardly bear to be away from her. The woman took her dog to the park. She took her to the market. She even took her dog to the dentist. And of course, she took her to work. The woman was a bookshop owner. When she first opened her shop, she called it Read It and Reap. It was known by this name for many years. Then she got her dog whom she named Martha Jane. And she loved the dog so much that she changed the name of the shop to honor her dog. It was called Martha Jane's Bookshop. And of course, Martha Jane was there every day. Martha Jane's Bookshop. Naturally, some people got things a little confused because they did not know that Martha Jane was a dog. When a new salesman came by peddling books, he would say, I am selling books. May I speak with Martha Jane? The bookshop owner would laugh with delight and say, Oh, <laughs> of course you may. And the salesman would find himself shaking hands with a dog. Sometimes people would call Martha Jane's bookshop on the phone, wanting advice about a book. They would say, May I speak with Martha Jane concerning a mystery book I'm looking for? The woman who owned the shop would look over at Martha Jane, who was chewing on a rubber telephone that very moment, and she would say, I'm sorry, Martha Jane can't take your call right now. She's on another line. May I help you? The caller would find his mystery book, though he really wished he could have spoken directly to Martha Jane. But after a while, everyone understood who really owned the bookshop, and they stopped calling Martha Jane for advice about good romance novels. But that doesn't mean they stopped asking for Martha Jane. Oh no, Martha Jane was such a good dog, such a sweet dog, that now people came into the bookshop looking first for her and second for books. They all loved her. Even the men got all mushy. One big man in a green coat would come in once a week and kneel down and stroke Martha Jane's smooth head and kiss her warm white face and tell her what an angel dog she was. He always brought a beefy bone for her and he sat on the floor and petted her as she ate. When he left, Martha Jane watched him from the window. The postman taught Martha Jane to fetch the mail. The policeman taught her to stand at attention. And the band director taught her to sing. He would come into the bookshop with his harmonica, and the two would make beautiful music together. <laughs> The whole town loved Martha Jane, and the bookshop business was very good. Then one day, the woman who owned the bookshop became ill with a sore throat. She would have to go to the hospital to have her tonsils removed. And even though she insisted on taking Martha Jane everywhere she went, the hospital said no. 
No dogs allowed in the hospital, no matter how sweet and good they are. The poor woman would have to go to the hospital all by herself, and she would have to find someone else to take care of Martha Jane. She didn't know whom to ask. But as soon as the policeman heard that Martha Jane needed a sitter, he came by the shop with his lights flashing and his siren on. And as soon as the postman heard it, he came wheeling around the corner in his Jeep. When the band director found out, he marched the entire high school band, which had been practicing on the football field, to the front door of Martha Jane's bookshop. And several children dragged their parents to the shop with dog toys and bags of kibble. Everyone wanted Martha Jane for a week. Things got a little nasty. The policeman told the postman to take his junk mail and stuff it down his pants. The postman told the band director to go blow his horn. The band director blew his horn in the policeman's ear. And some of the children swatted each other with their bags of kibble. Just as it looked as if everyone might have to go to the hospital and no one would be able to take care of Martha Jane, a big man in a green coat walked through the crowd. He had a beefy bone in his hand. He knelt down beside Martha Jane and stroked her smooth head and kissed her warm white face and told her what an angel dog she was. At the sound of his voice, everyone grew quiet and only Martha Jane's crunchings could be heard. Martha Jane had made her choice. The bookshop woman's hospital stay went very well. She got 20 boxes of candy from devoted customers, and she read 10 new spy thrillers. But she missed her dog. When finally the woman was well and returned to her shop, Martha Jane was sitting at the window wearing a big yellow bow and smelling like a flower garden. She had waited for the woman all week long, and when Martha Jane saw the woman coming, she leaped to the floor and ran to the door and covered the woman's face with dog kisses. The woman found that the big man in the green coat had painted her mailbox, dusted her shelves, washed her windows, and swept her floor. But most important, he had loved her dog. Things worked out quite happily after that. The postman eventually forgave the policeman, who forgave the band director. The children all made up. The woman and the big man in the green coat liked each other so much that they got married. Martha Jane went on the honeymoon, of course. She loved Hawaii.